In this video, I'm going to discuss replacing the original 4.5 amp hour lead acid battery with a lithium iron 6 amp hour battery. I'm going to measure the UPS's minimum running battery voltage, the lithium iron battery's actual amp hour capacity, and maximum sustained current, along with a few other interesting things I learned about this UPS. One thing I did learn about this UPS is it has a connector on the bottom whereby pulling this connector out you can completely disconnect the battery from the UPS. So this is my setup. I've got the UPS, my power supply which is acting as the battery, the output with a little light, and the output also going to my oscilloscope. Right now, nothing is powered on except the power supply and the oscilloscope, and the power supply is actually has zero volts on here because it shows off. What I'm going to do here next is I'm going to enable the AC input into the UPS, and I'm also going to turn on the power to the power supply for the battery. If you turn this on without the battery hooked up, this will beep all the time, indicating that there's a problem with the battery, which is a good thing. You'll notice here it shot up from 13.3 volts, which was the setting on the power supply to 13.63 volts. What this is actually measuring is the charging voltage of the UPS to the battery. So if there was a battery here, the maximum voltage it could charge to would be 13.63 volts. I'll kind of confirm that because if I take this off, you'll see it jumps down to the configured voltage, which is 13.3, which we can adjust this way. But when you hook this back up, it shows you the actual voltage on the input. That's just, um, I don't know if it's a design feature or whatnot, but that's, a, that's what this power supply shows you is the actual voltage. So at this point, we can turn on the UPS and we can see what it does. We can see it goes with the AC waveform. It's going to kick on a test with the battery to make sure the battery is actually hooked up. You can see a load here. And then it's going to turn that off, and now we're back to the AC output, and there's basically no, no current going to or from the battery, basically because this is actually lower than the charging voltage. So no voltage is going to go into the power supply from the UPS because it's not a battery. So we, we'll go ahead and adjust this to be the same voltage just about of what it would charge a battery to, and then we're going to go ahead and run a couple of tests. I want to see what voltage does this actually shut off at, in meaning what voltage is the minimum voltage that this UPS would run on. So at this point we are on AC and I'm going to go ahead and turn the AC off to the UPS here. Okay, so now you can see we've switched to the square wave output and we're running off of the power supply voltage or the battery at 0.36 amps, more or less, about 5 watts quiescent current. And you can also see the little light lighting up here, possibly, but anyhow you can see that uh, the output and we have the waveform. I will say before we start going down with voltage, I will say there is a, an interesting anomaly here. I've noticed if you started to increase the voltage more than this would actually charge a battery to, the uh, output waveform starts to look a little funky. That's something I hadn't seen in any of the other UPSs I've done my testing with. But you can see here, as we go higher, you start seeing a pretty odd waveform. Because of that, I don't really want to test any high voltage cutoff. I'm just going to go ahead and stick to the 13.6, uh, and we're going to walk our way down. Now I've run this test already once, and, I'll, and you'll note that this will start actually beeping that your battery is pretty low at a certain voltage. So that voltage is a lot lower than 13.6, so we're going to kind of jump down here um, rapidly until we get near the range where I remember it starting to beep. So we're here at 12 volts, and we can also note here another thing I noticed is that this flashes twice when there's pretty much good capacity in your battery. When we were at uh, the 13.6 volts, it was also flashing twice with a pause. So as we go down, we 
you can see that 11.3 volts is where this starts to beep, indicating your battery is getting low, and also this light starts to flash differently. It's basically doing a rapid flash with no break in between. So let's see what the actual cutoff voltage is as we go down further. Okay, looks like it works up until about 10.2 volts. At 10.1 volts it cuts off. Another interesting thing I've noticed about this is if suddenly your battery were to miraculously have more voltage, this does not kick on again. It kind of latches off because, you know, it probably realizes the battery's not going to charge until an AC voltage actually returns. So I'm going to go ahead and, oh, there we go. Oh, that was interesting. It clicked. But nothing else happened. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the AC. The AC is now on. And the UPS is now going back to AC, falling back to the battery, doing its initial self-test as it turns on. And we're back on AC. For now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and charge this to the maximum capacity, for which a lithium iron battery at 12.8 volts would be 14.6 volts. And you can see here this says max charging current is 3 amps, so that's what I'm going to set this to, or that's what I've already set this to, and I'm going to go ahead and start. So we're going to see it's, it's not too far off, actually. It's probably going to show that it's fully charged in just a minute here. So we'll go ahead and wait. If needed, I'll go ahead and speed up this uh, this video, but I suspect the BMS in this battery is going to turn off in a minute once it uh, shows that it's fully charged. There we go. It's fully charged. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my capacity meter, and we'll run a capacity test on this battery. Last time when I ran it, which is probably well over a year ago, I got full capacity. But it's been a while. It'll be good to interesting to see what the actual capacity of this is. You can see it kicked on some more charging because as the cells, you know, internally balance or whatever, um, it's probably going to do that a few times. But for all intents and purposes, it's pretty much charged. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the capacity meter and set the video for time lapse. I set the discharge current to be six amps which is 1C. The capacity test measured just above the battery's rated capacity of 6 amp hours, which is great. All right, so we're going to do one other test here. Is what, what I want to do is I want to check the current draw and the current charging into this lithium iron battery from the UPS. We noticed it had the 3 amp, that's the max charging current recommended from the manufacturer. Let's see how much current this would actually charge into the battery uh, based on a battery that needs charge. Now I've recharged this battery somewhat, probably around 80% charge um, after running the capacity test. So let's go ahead and test that out. I've got my oscilloscope here actually set up as a current meter with a 10 amp maximum and it's in series between the battery and the UPS. So current going into the battery will be a positive value and current coming out of the battery will be a negative value. Right now this UPS is disconnected from the AC and it's turned off. If I turn this UPS on we're going to see that it kicks on and then as soon as it starts producing electricity on the AC outlets, we see it's drawing 0.32 amps from the battery into the UPS. We can confirm that when I turn this little light on, it draws more current because the light requires current in order to light up. The light won't matter regarding the charging, as we'll see in a second, but I'm going to go ahead and turn on the AC power. That's going to switch the UPS from running on the battery to actually charging the battery. So I've turned on the AC and we can see now that we're charging about 0 0.4, 0 0.41, 0 0.4, yeah, 0.41 amps into the battery. So we're well under the three amps maximum charging current of this battery. And you'll see here that the light makes no difference on the charging current because it has nothing to do with it. 
For my next test, I want to test the current capacity of this battery. It's rated for 6 amp hours, so 1C would be 6 amps. I'm wondering if you can go higher than that, like 2C or 3C, and whether the BMS would support that, or whether the BMS would cut out due to high current. So let's go ahead and give that a try. We've got this set to 6 amps, and we know it can do that, so I'm going to go ahead and start the test. And you can see here that uh, this battery is mostly charged, and we're running just fine. I can up the current slowly, and we can see what happens. I'm now at about 1.5C, and it's generating about 112 watts of power out of this battery. So it's sustaining that just fine. Let's go a little higher than that. Let's go to 12 and see how that works. And we'll let it run for like maybe half a minute. The most that this capacity measuring will be able to do is 15 amps. So that may be the maximum we can try, but let's just go ahead and see whether that works or whether it'll cut out. Now they do say you shouldn't run high capacity current from uh, lithium iron much more than 1C for too long or you could shorten the life of the battery. But for this little test, I don't think it's going to make much difference. All right, that's working just fine. Let's go up to the 15. So now we're drawing 15 amps out of this 6 amp hour battery and about 180 watts. And that is the maximum that this capacity meter can do. We'll let this run for a minute. And if that works well, then I would say this battery could work with this UPS up to about 180 watt load. A little less because there's always some losses and wires and whatnot. Let's check this battery. I don't feel anything getting particularly hot. These wires are a little bit warm, but that's to be expected. Okay, we've run about a minute and it's still working. So I would say that uh, up to 2.5C, this battery works just fine. Again, I can't go any higher than that. So um, this looks pretty good. Summarizing, the UPS will charge up to 13.63 volts. The UPS cuts off with a battery voltage of 10.1 volts. The UPS's minimum battery current when running on battery is 0.322 amps with no AC load. The lithium iron battery that I'm using provided 6.07 amp hours of capacity and I was able to sustain a 15 amp current draw for one minute. So I asked ChatGPT what it thought of using the 6 amp hour lithium iron battery compared to the lead acid battery and here's the response. Basically we won't ever be fully charging this battery because we only charge up to 13.63 volts, never the 14.6. That would be a full charge. And the UPS would cut off a little bit above the BMS's minimum 10.0 volts. So the usable capacity per chat GPT was probably about 5.7 amp hours, which is pretty good. Compared to the lead acid battery, we should get quite a bit longer run time. Now I suspect that discharging a lead acid battery down to 10.2 volts would use most of the capacity compared to the 50% listed here. But in any case, I think this will work pretty well. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And if you're interested, take a look at one of my other videos here.